Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. So when we look at BABA, we land where we always land when we're looking at Uniform Accounting Analysis and Valens Research app, what we call the Performance and Valuation Prime Page, or PVP for short. Similar to the name Uniform Accounting, we're very literal people here at Valens. We call it Performance and Valuation Prime. Why? Because we focus on the performance of a company in terms of what is its return on assets and what is its asset growth, right? How, how profitable is it and how much is it able to compound that growth? And we focus on valuations, value to assets, and also value to earnings. Value to assets is our cleaned up version of a price to book metric. Value to earnings, our cleaned up version of a PE metric. And when we look here, what we can see it's really powerful is there are two bars on each of these charts. There's an orange bar and a blue bar. The orange bar here is the distorted as reported return on assets for Alibaba. The blue bar is the uniform accounting, uniform true blue real profitability of this business. Right. And if you remember, we highlighted when we were talking about Alibaba, when, when we sent everybody the invite, we said, hey, we actually can understand why it is that China is cracking down on this company when we look at it on a uniform accounting basis, right? When you look at it on an as reported basis, you see Alibaba and you see a 5% return on asset business. This is a company that barely gets to its cost of capital. If we look at a real cost of capital number for a company, it is a low return business on an as reported basis. You would look at this and you would say, why is China cracking down on this company? This company barely makes any money anyways, relative to how much assets it plows from the business. They're focusing on the wrong story here. But when we look at the uniform accounting numbers, we see a company that has 120% return on assets, right? If you put $1 into this business, in the same year you put $1 in, you get $1.20 back. That is a staggeringly high return. That is an absurdly high return, arguably benefited from the fact that it has right the great firewall around its operations in China, which is its base of profitability. And China looks at that and China probably says, wait a second, we're letting a company make 120% returns a year off of basically our populace, our technology, our infrastructure, yeah, we should be getting some of that. And that's probably part of the reason why you see China being able to crack down on Alibaba and being comfortable about it because they know how profitable the business is in reality when you see through the accounting noise. When we look at Alibaba, we're not just looking at the return on assets though, when we understand the business, we're also looking at how good is this company at growing? Right? And what we can see here, is this a company on a uniform accounting basis that is impressively reinvested in its business every single year for the last six years? Right? Arguably, we wouldn't understand why it's reinvesting if we're looking at the as reported metrics. Looking at as reported, and you'd say, wait a second, this company is a 5% return every single year for the last seven years, and yet it's growing at 50 to 100%, 30 to 100% each of those years? That makes no sense. But when you see the uniform accounting data, the fundamental trends start to make sense. When we look at value to asset prime ratio, what this is trying to help us understand is what is the multiple the market is paying relative to this company's asset base? So what we can see is there's a very strong relationship relative to how profitable a business is and how high a multiple the market pays for it. And then of course, for value to earnings prime ratio for a cleanup PE, we're trying to understand how much is the, company, is the market paying for this company relative to its earnings power. And we can see here for Alibaba is it's around 20 times. This last chart that we show here, this is TSRR. What does that mean? TSR is total shareholder return. That is the return the company generates um, relative, uh, basically, when we include stock price appreciation and we include dividend income, any dividend you've been played. The second R is relative. Relative to what? Relative to its benchmark, benchmark indice. Well, Alibaba is a Chinese company. It is listed in the US. So we actually benchmark it against the S&P 500. So when you're looking at this, this is the total return an investor would get for the company relative to if they had just put a dollar in the S&P 500. When this is down, that means it underperformed the S&P 500. When it's up, it means it outperformed the S&P 500. When it's flat, it means it performed in line with the S&P. And what's really telling and powerful here is when you, when you look, one of the reasons why we know uniform accounting metrics matter is because so often this chart here tracks what's happening on a uniform accounting profitability basis. And what we can see is when uniform ROAs were falling, so was the stock's performance relative to the market. When they were rising, so was the stock's performance relative to the market. And now since they've been falling again, the stock has also been underperforming the market. So really what we're looking at here is one, we can understand 
the market pays attention to uniform accounting, not the as reported metrics. Two, we can understand how wrong the as reported metrics are. And the third thing that we can do, which is really powerful for investing, right? Because all the things I talked about before are powerful about understanding a company's historic performance, but that doesn't tell you whether or not you should buy the stock. We can also understand whether or not the company looks undervalued and overvalued on this chart by focusing on these last five bars here and here. These two light blue bars, those are what Wall Street sell side analysts are forecasting Alibaba's return on assets and asset growth to be for the next two years. When we take their as reported metrics and we push them through our uniform accounting framework. These three white bars are what the market is pricing Alibaba to do for the next five years at a $560 billion stock price and a, I mean, a market cap and a $200 stock price. So what we can see here is what the market is pricing Alibaba to do is one thing. It's pricing growth for Alibaba to fall off a cliff. To basically say Alibaba is going to have a real decision with um, everything that's going on and saying they're going to cut off all of their investment, which probably doesn't make sense because Alibaba still has phenomenal growth opportunities, even with the concerns that everybody has for regular overhangs. The other thing the market is saying is not only will they shut off growth, returns will remain at these historically low levels for them. Now, arguably, if there is some sort of regulatory pressure for Alibaba to you know, change their business model, et cetera, about Ant Financial, about Alibaba as a core, about its other business, you could see those returns fall. But here's the thing, you probably won't see Alibaba stop investing in its business like the market's expecting it to. And the really interesting thing for Alibaba is if the company keeps on reinvesting in its business, let's just say 25% a year, right? The company grew at 30% last year. Um, it grew at 50% and 100% the prior years. But if it grew at 25% a year, for it to be fairly valued, ROE would need to keep on falling down to 65%. Let's say that it actually grew at 50%, right? It kept on reinvesting like it has historically. If it did, for the company to be fairly valued, it would have to see its returns fall dramatically. Not to 64%, it would have to see its returns fall to 30%, right? They would be basically be needed to cut by three quarters from current levels. You would have to see a massive level of restructuring of this company's profitability from regulatory overhangs just to make it fairly valued right now. And that's important because that says if you think that those kind of growth numbers are realistic, which, by the way, if you look at right, Alibaba's equivalent in the U.S., Amazon, those are numbers in growth rates that Amazon still puts up. Well, then all of a sudden it starts to say, hey, you know what? The market's probably already pricing in the catastrophe of any Chinese regulation for this company. Even though we understand why China is probably coming down on the company and thinks they can, we can understand that it's not going to be as bad for the stock going forward as people might think. Valens Research, the world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.